What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen around the world, wherever you may be. I am Jay Campbell and you are listening to the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual new and improved stream yard studio with an amazing young man by the name of Ted Bach. Ted, how are you, brother? I'm doing fine. I'm not young, but I'm fine. Oh, you are very, very young. It's not how old you are, it's how old you feel. So let me tell you guys Ted's yes. bio a little bit. So Ted is an 80-year-old brother who basically has an amazing story, which is going to be revealed on this podcast. But uh, he reached out to me. I don't know, in an email a couple of months back and was like, you know, breaking down what he does, right? He's been on testosterone for nearly 20 years. He has a meticulous record of all of his lab work, but basically he's very similar to me. He biohacked through the nebulous aspects of sick care, you know, conventional medicine, whatever you want to call it nowadays, illness medicine, and, and figured out how to use testosterone therapeutically totally, you know, change his life. And, and, you know, his story is unbelievable. I mean, and basically in 2000, what was it? 2001, you had two stents put in, correct? Uh, in 2002. Yeah. 2002. One, so one, yeah. Actually just one stent, but if it had been a quarter inch away, I would have been bypass. So I was okay. kind of lucky. So, but so I, you I listened to changed him. your life. You, you basically, oh, yeah. you changed your life from where you were. And then you found obviously testosterone and from there, finding testosterone, you had to play a game with, again, conventional medicine, attempting to find doctors who would write you scripts, do it right. And you, yep. again, through self-diagnosis and self-evaluation, figured out how to do this. And obviously, you found my book later and read through it. And we we're like, wow, this guy did the same thing that I did. <laughs> it blew my mind to, feel, to find out that we both reached the same conclusion. And I had nothing, nothing to guide me except a, a forum. Uh, you know, 20 years ago on 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 the internet, and that was actually uh, John Chrysler. That was Chrysler's forum, yes. right? All things male. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, I was it made in that the, the complete the difference. Yeah, I was so in that when, forum. When it, I don't remember my handle in that forum, but I was in there, and I it, a lot of actually, I shouldn't say a lot, but it is amazing how the world works. Because Ted, I literally was on a podcast just a week ago with Ben Greenfield and now another podcast with another physician two nights ago, which I cannot name yet because that podcast has not come out. And when they asked me about post finasteride syndrome, the two men that I know that died were actually in that forum with Mm. Dr. Fittler and in in the forum that you were in with all things male. Yeah. So it's, it's full circle, but let's, let's talk about you. So again, you're 80 year old guy, you're using therapeutic testosterone you you know completely reevaluated your life, and and we'll and obviously we're going to go into this, but also in 2020 during the year of COVID, whatever that is or maybe, <laughs> you 
you came out as a yes. gay man and you have, yes. you've been married, happily married since 1961 and you have four yep. children. One of them yep. is adopted. And yep. you, again, everybody, you, yourself, your family, everybody is highly accomplished. And it was like your time in 2020 to come out and, you know, openly state yes. that you were gay. Now I want you to, you know, take me back a little bit is to figuring this out. Like at what point in your life did you know this? I kept it for myself my entire life. Uh, I started to go to therapy a year and a half ago because uh, my marriage was full of conflict and confrontation just all the time. And I couldn't deal with either of those. So I would shut down and look for the nearest exit and things would just continue. The next day we'd have the same argument. The next day we'd have the same argument. It went on and on. And I got a hold of a very, very good therapist who told me again something I already knew. I can't change anybody. I can only change myself. Right. And that was that was my major, major accomplishment with that particular thing. But he taught me how to run toward confrontation instead of away from it. And we've actually had discussions over the past three or four months that we never had in 60 years of marriage. We just avoided everything, but how's the weather? What's for dinner? I mean, it was very surface. And uh, last May, I went to his office thinking, I'm a straight man going into a therapist's office trying to get marital help. And during that 50-minute session, uh, he asked me the question, where do you think you are on the sexuality scale? And I said, well, I'm certainly not 100% on either end. I'm somewhere in the middle. And we talked a little more. And by the time I left that day, that was 40 minutes later, uh, I had fully acknowledged and embraced the fact that I'm gay. And as I look back at things that happened in my life, I've written a journal since 2015. I wish it had started much earlier. But I've gone back in my memory now to think of things that happened over the past 60 years that I should have noticed my red yeah. flags. Didn't see them. Didn't see them at all. So it was completely out of the blue for me that May, that May afternoon when I left his office. A couple days later, I came out to my wife. She's very supportive. Uh, came out to the family, to kids, grandkids. Uh, we're retired, so there's no business involved. But uh, I, I chose a different route. Most people who come out later in their lives come out in baby steps. And I've chosen to be shot from a cannon. Uh, I, I am completely out. In fact, my, my therapist calls me his cannonball. That's uh, awesome. I'm, I'm completely out. I'm very comfortable with it. And it has it, it has its virtues. Yesterday, I, uh, I went swimming for the second time in the last year because the pool has been so restricted. And I was able to go swimming. And there was a, a guy that came over while I was getting in the pool. And he said, hi, how are you? Stopped a minute to talk. And he said, man, you've changed. What happened? Wow. I said, what? And I hadn't even come out to him yet. He said, you have changed. You're much more outgoing. You're much more accessible. I don't know what other word I could put to it. And I said, well, how would honesty and transparency do? Because that's what coming out has given me, being honest and being totally transparent. I no longer have to filter anything. I won't filter anything. And I'm very, very honest. So it's been it's been great for me. That's it's awesome, a little man. difficult. It's been a little difficult difficult for my wife, and she said, "You know, I didn't sign up for this." And I said, "Well, I didn't either. This is as big a surprise to to me as it is to you. And we can either go forward and make this work, or we can let it destroy us. And I don't want it to do that." So that's after, where we're, well, after you that's said that. Well, let, well, let, let's go back a little bit. So you said that there were yeah. some events in your life that you ignored. What, what, what oh were God. <laughs> I, I should have I should have realized uh, we dated for five years before we got married. Uh, there was no there were there was a very short menu when I grew up. You were either straight or you were straight. Right. There was nothing else on that menu, and uh, I 
found more friends in, in women and girls than I did with men. I felt very uncomfortable about, around men because I wasn't a sportsman. I wasn't a hunter. I wasn't, I didn't fish. I played music. I, uh, one of my, one of my first things was at 12 years old. And I bring this up quite often. What do most 12 year old male boys, you know, boys want be a football, baseball, uh, a model kit, uh, a BB gun. What did I want? A sewing machine. Wow. And I told my, I told my dad and he's, he's very supportive. He was my rock. And he said, okay, let's go get one. And we got in the car, went to wards, bought a sewing machine and I made drapes for my bedroom. Wow. And I, I told my therapist this a couple months ago. He said, well, that's the first punch on your gay card. And that's when I was 12 years old. <laughs> that's, the reason, that's the reason I love the guy. He has a great sense of humor. <laughs> and there, there, are just, there are just so many others. I can remember being home on a Saturday afternoon watching. At that time, we just had one, one son. And uh, he was very young, and he was taking a nap. And I happened to be in the house on the first floor. And I heard a, a lawnmower going in the, in the neighbor's yard behind me. And I hit the steps two at a time to get upstairs and take a look at the guy next door who was in very short shorts, no shirt, and a magnificent young body. And watching him mow the lawn in my neighbor's yard, didn't even think they would have any connection. Yeah. Not at all. I just thought maybe other people do this. I didn't think it was right. wrong. Right. And the fu the funniest one is that our daughter came out as gay when she was 20. And we were very active in PFLAG, parents and friends of lesbians and gays. And uh, to the point where we were, were moderating uh, circles at meetings. We were going from college to college and performing uh, speakers bureaus where whole classes, two or 300 students uh, would get a chance to talk to my wife, to me, and uh, usually one lesbian and one gay. So they could ask questions, you know, what is it like? What do you feel it's different? And it, we found out at that time that if you put a face on gay, it isn't quite so scary. If you know the person, it, it right. really makes a difference. By the but way, how long, I was, was how long ago was this? That, that was in the late 80s. Yeah, so still way and, before anything like today. Oh, way way before then. Yeah. But I, I, I often think to myself, okay, I was standing there surrounded by <laughs> gay men, gay women in that, in, you know, in, in that particular arena, and I didn't get a connection. Yeah. I remember the first time we went to a, a parade and there was a, a fair afterwards, a pride fair. That was, I think that was before they even called them pride fairs. Right. But as we were walking to the area where the fair was, I see two guys who are uh, <laughs> enjoying a pretty good kiss. And really, I, I looked at him and said, oh, and then I thought for a second, I said, wait a minute. Those are obviously two guys who are very emotionally involved with one another. Mm -hmm. Who am I to say this is wrong? Right. And that's another one of those switches that should have, you know, should have made me think, what, 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 look at yourself, man. <laughs> but I prefer well, not well, so, to. I was well, really good at the now. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. And it's a tough question. Yeah. Were you unconscious of being unconscious? No, I don't think so. But I, I often, I often say that I think my unconscious was trying to get a, get a, in touch with my conscience, conscious, because every once in a while something would come up and I would immediately, immediately bat it down because I, I denied anything having to do with, with, uh, with sexuality. So I don't think I would have listened to anyone. Yeah, because you didn't have a father or mother that was like, you know, homophobic or anything like that. You didn't grow no. up in an environment that bashed gays or anything like no. that. No. Right? My mother was evil, but she wasn't homophobic. <laughs> My dad was the best person in the world. Uh, had I not been given, had he not been given custody of me when they divorced, 
my life would have taken a completely different slant. Uh, I had a, I always felt loved. I always felt protected with him, and I had a charmed childhood. I was, I was uh, what they call it today. I was, uh, I was entitled and uh, white. Right. Uh, lived in a home where there was never any worries about food on the table or mm. a roof over my head. So I had a very charmed life. I happened to fall in love with somebody who was uh, very similar. We, we were friends for five years before we got married. And uh, it's it's just that I've had a really charmed life the whole time. I have four so, great kids. Yeah, I was going to get to your kids in a second. But when you talk about falling in love with your wife, but knowing that you were gay, not being connected to the idea, like what does that mean? And only you can probably explain this. I to, in fact, she, she reminded me today, we've been talking to somebody, and she said, you know, the first time we went on on a date, he told me he was going to marry me, and I did. I was really infatuated with her. I was in love with her. She was my, my best friend's girlfriend shortly before we started dating, and uh, he kind of stepped out of the picture. He said, you know, three's company, well, two's company, three's a crowd, and I think I'm the crowd. So I'm leaving. Goodbye. And uh, we we just were really, really good friends. And that blossomed into, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to get married. And I, so, I've had thoughts of that today. Had I known I was gay at the time, I would not have kept it a secret. But I still would have attempted to get married because family and children were really primary on my list. Sure. I I wanted to be a daddy. That was that was my dad was a great father, and that's what I wanted to emulate. So I would have anyway. So so when you were with your wife though initially, like were you guys, <laughs> were you physically attracted to her? Like you know, like were yeah. you? I mean, because obviously you had a very close emotional intimate connection. Yeah, you were great yeah. friends. I agree with the word, but I have to t I have to tell you a secret, and that's one another one of my red flags. When when we, the day we were married, uh, we went to the motel or the hotel after after the wedding, and it was a three ring circus. My my in laws decided that they had to put on a big show, and they did. We had five hundred people at our wedding. Wow. Sit sit down dinner, the band, full bar. I mean, the whole thing. It was it was obscene. We didn't want that, but they did. So that's what happened. Right. <laughs> we. We escaped to the hotel and relaxed a little while, but by that time we were both absolutely exhausted and we were leaving for California, driving to California the next morning on honeymoon. And we went to bed and we became intimate for the first time. We were both virgins and we got married, which is not that odd in yeah, back then, right. one. Right. Now it would be completely oh, cattywampus. And when we were done, I had Peggy Lee singing in my mind. Is that all there is? Is that all there is? Is this what I've been waiting for? Because I felt hardly anything. Nothing, yeah. Hardly anything at all. And unfortunately, that has continued most of my life. We haven't had uh, a sexual relationship for a long time, and that was because of me. I just felt it was inauthentic. I was not getting anything from a physical relief maybe but nothing emotional right and uh it's been very hard on on my wife because uh i i handled it poorly i i had a very difficult time of life at that particular time she had a lot of neck and back surgery she had six of them within within two years and was spending most of her time convalescing meantime i had four children two dogs a house a business and everything else to take care of, uh, right. dinner, the laundry. I mean, everything. All of our kids were five and six years old, so they couldn't really help very much. And I was absolutely overwhelmed and had no one to talk to. No one. I couldn't talk to her because she would perceive this as her fault. Yeah. So I never said anything. But it absolutely destroyed me, and I realized that I just that something had to go. And what it was was our our sexual relationship and i'm did, not proud of that but 
at all. But we well, did, did we she, didn't did she come on we to didn't you a talk. Lot? I mean, did she, no. did she physically make overtures or no? Uh, when she did, I turned my back on her. I mean, I, I'm not proud of what I did at all. But I, I, I think I was trying to be honest to myself, and it was very hurtful. And at those, in those days, we could not talk. We just could not. We did not. Everything was very surface. And that has only opened since I came out, because now we're having conversations. I'm not scared of conflict anymore. And we're actually having deep conversations that we should have had for the last 60 years. Uh, I hope it, I hope it goes well. I mean, we, at our age, we should be able to figure out some way to get along for the rest of our lives. Well, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I mean, honestly, Ted, you know, you're a brave and courageous person. And, you know, that's the only people, people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast these days, you know, by my choosing are people like you. So <laughs> I, I, I applaud you. Uh, to speak you. about this. And I think you're going to help a lot of people because there's a lot of people out there right now like you. And I kind of want to talk about that. You know, the idea of a long time ago, again, you're 80 years old, you know, my, for, 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 for the record, I mean, most people know I'm 50. My mom and dad are 76 and my dad will be 76 in November. And my mom is 75. So they're the same age now, but my dad's a little older than her, but uh, they're youngsters. You know, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, 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 but back then, as you said, you know, traditionally in, in North America and probably globally, you know, people were virgins. They weren't sexually experienced. Yeah. They didn't yeah. have any idea of what it was like to be in a physical, intimate relationship. And so once you did that, you know, and now you're connected through, you know, the marriage union and the paperwork and the contract and the state law and the, you know, all that, it's like, it's a whole different world. And so it would have been a lot harder back then. Um, especially the way you were conditioned and the yeah, way either you, you were taught. Yeah. Either you adapt or you die. Right. And I chose to adapt and I've done that most of my life. In fact, one of the things I follow today is something I've read somewhere. I've read more in the past year than I have my entire life. And it's mostly L LGBTQ slanted ideas because that's where I really need to know. And I read something somewhere that says, learn who you are unlearn who they want you to be mm -hmm. and that's that spoke volumes to me absolute volumes and i'm but getting can, to know who i, I am an argument i can make an argument i don't mean to cut you off but i can make an argument no, that that's, the, that's the entire united states oh I mean, yeah pretty much everything that we've ever been taught is bullshit i mean we'll, we can yeah. talk about that in the medical establishment you already know that so it's kind of like Yep. That's brilliant advice, but I would just say, and you can get back to your, your comment, but I would just say that that applies to everyone. It does. It absolutely does. You have to be yourself. And it, it, it isn't that difficult to be yourself once you accept who you are right. and love who you are. And I, I've gotten to that point. And I've found that I have, I have fantastic support. I was very lucky to come across a... Uh, uh, a support group for men who were out to wives. It's called How, H-O-W. And that was my saving grace this entire year, uh, having those guys who are living a similar life on a similar journey. None of ours are exactly the same, but there are similarities. And we simply share stories between, between us, uh, which are honest and real. And uh, there's... There's no judgment. It's just listening. And That's it's awesome. been marvelous for me. Absolutely marvelous. And then I found out I'm also a nudist. So that was <laughs> that was a whole that was a whole different story. But I've I've uh, I've joined a, a bi gay uh, nudist club in, in uh, Portland. And I've found my tribe. I find these guys are accepting. There's no body shaming. Uh, they're warm and accepting and very easy to be around for the first time in my life. I'm comfortable around a group of men. That's awesome. I never was before. Never was. How, by the way, how many of them are using therapeutic testosterone and are they aged? Are, are, they, are they ages through all, all through the gamut, you know, up from 25? It, 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 up, it, that particular group runs everything from thirties up to 90. I'm not actually, I'm not the oldest one in, in that, That's awesome. uh, in that group. Um, and I don't know because a lot of people just don't talk about testosterone. 
But I would imagine when I see people falling asleep while they're eating dinner, which is what I used to do, uh, they're either, either they don't have enough energy or they have apnea, which I also have. But even using the CPAP, I, if I don't keep active, I fall asleep. And uh, I would imagine there are a lot of people who are pretty low in testosterone and don't know it. And their well, doctors. As you know, know, that's one of our talking points. So we can segue perfectly yeah. to that. So, so first off, again, I thank you for sharing your story. I hope that to my listening audience, which is a lot larger than the actual numbers indicate, because I'm so suppressed on social media, I would hope that some of <laughs> no you, kidding. <laughs> yeah, you know that, but I would actually hope that some of you find value in Ted's story. And, you know, after the show runs, you know, I will leave or he will have, you will have the ability to email him and connect with him. Cause I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there that are going to find a lot of value from a standpoint of that they're going to have the courage. You, you, you've basically spawned them to, to, to come out, you know, and if not to come out to at least have a conversation with you about how to do it. Yep. Well, don't do it my way. Cause going out in a cannon is, is hard on everybody. <laughs> Yes, you have to be yourself. But 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 I would say, and I will counter you, that you are doing it the way that you have to do it. Because yes, I'm you doing did it, yeah, not exactly. do it. Yeah, you did not do it for all those years. So now it's about like, you know what? I'm living my truth. I'm transparent. I'm authentic. This is the real Ted. And F you yep. to the world who doesn't appreciate or accept this. Yeah, and I don't have 30 years to uh, to live. Uh I'll be that's very not, lucky that's if not I lose. That's really true. And how's, who's to say the guy on testosterone isn't going to lead uh, to one thirty? Well, actually, I could. I have, <laughs> I have a I have a half brother who is a hundred years old in August. Proof. And there's the proof. He's you know he's he's blind and deaf, but he's got it upstairs, and we still keep in contact. That's awesome. And so there's there's great genes somewhere. That's totally awesome. Um, okay, so. The, the segue was, you know, talking about how how insidious hormone deficiencies are in society today, oh, yeah. and how, as you told me, and you experienced, and of course I experienced, and people like us have experienced, how there is no solution in the conventional slash mainstream medicine. Can you talk a little bit about no. that? There's denial. <laughs> they uh, they will tell you that if you have two hundred, if you have two hundred. Uh, you're fine. Testosterone. Age, age, age you're fine. Cool, it's it's yeah. right. It's perfectly normal for an 80 year old man. Well, maybe some 80 year old men, but I don't want to be uh, completely you're not normal. bereft. No, I don't want to be bereft of energy. I need to live an active life. Exactly. And that was bought. That was brought, by the way, from having the heart attacks and the stent. Before then, I was a couch potato. I wasn't active at all, but I listened. And uh, that was an interesting story. The, the morning after my stent, uh, a, a rehab nurse came into my room and said, could you tell me what happened to yourself yesterday? I said, well, I had this episode. She said, episode hell. You had two heart attacks. Now, either you learn how to live with that, or I guarantee you're going to die from it. And wow. I listened to that her. Was it was the angel double. Right there. That was yes, that was the, it was the double slap that I needed, and uh, I listened. I changed the way I ate. I exercised every day. I'd be between two guys in rehab, one on each side of me on treadmills. Hey, I had the greatest all-you-can-eat buffet over the weekend. You've got to go try it. The other guy on the other side said, oh, yeah, well, I've gone to this one. And all I could say was, are you listening, guys? You need to change. You can't eat like that and not exercise. And I became <laughs> became kind of, uh, uh, they used to call me the food Nazi in my family because I was really careful about what I ate. And I but Ted, you really have to be that way. I mean, let's you be do. honest. Look at the shit that they feed America. Look at the stuff. Yes. That is the GMO, the boxed food, the processed trans fat, the high fructose corn syrup. These things are poisoning not only the physical yes. body, but the souls of the people consuming. Well, I, I look at the crap that I bring home for my wife to consume because she she wants to continue to eat the way she did. Right, right. And uh, she, I can't do it. I, no. I bring home donuts, and I sit them down on the counter and say, there you go. <laughs> I'm not going to have one I mean, of those honestly, things. dude, I couldn't eat a donut if my life depended on it. I don't think I've no, eaten I a donut either. in 30 years. I haven't Literally. either. 
you know? it's not important to me at all i can i can do with something else i'd rather have uh, a lot of other things hey guys what's going on it's jay campbell quick commercial for the optimized tribe with u.s navy seal michael jaco and i every monday night at 6 p.m pacific standard time there is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that michael and i can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. When you get to the level of development that people like you and I have, not, not just physiologically through health optimization or hormonal balance, but it's, it's spiritual. It's like yes. you eat that shit and you know, two hours later, you feel it biologically. But people like your wife, like thousands of people that I know who don't have that development, they don't know any different. I think the answer is to listen to your body. They don't I've even started have a listening way to, do to it. it. Uh, well, I've listened to my body and I've figured out that I cannot eat dairy. Wow. I just can't. Every time I eat something with, with dairy in it, I have stomach problems and, yes. Uh, yes. and, and messy joints and muscles. I don't want to do that. Well, here's something. So you I, don't, just, I just don't need it. Let me tell you something about that. And very few people know this. And I did a podcast about this back in 2015. And I found this through research because it's not no, it's not available in the mainstream, and you could never find it publicly. But forty, almost forty five percent, it's like right under of men and women in North America, cannot digest lactose after a certain <laughs> age. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, age. after a certain age. So you can actually consume it up until about the late mid to late twenties. And then yep. you're one of those people where literally the, the lactose sitting in the uh, microbiome is causing like dis all sorts of disruptive gas, yes. nauseous, you know, you feel horrific from that. And again, most people don't listen to their bodies like you did and no, they keep eating I, that I, I, I even get joint pain. Yeah. And oh, of course. I can't. I can't deal with that because I want to be able to walk and to ride and to exercise and to swim. I need my joints to work. So it's a tough racket in a tough world that we live in, but you have to choose personal accountability. You have to become yes. self sovereign. You have to listen, exactly. as you said, to yourself. Yep. Yeah, me, myself, and listen to my body. And it's really helped me. I feel much better today. I've often said that I was much healthier after my heart attack and stent than I had been my entire life. And I, I really feel that way. So I got to ask you, so you've, you, you, again, you're a tinkerer. You've methodically and meticulously kept all your labs. You've used various testosterone, therapeutic testosterone yep. delivery systems. I, I, I see in here, which I didn't see initially that of course the conventional quack medicine had you on statins. Can you talk a little bit about what life is <laughs> like on statins? Yeah, I could tell you about statins. When I, when I was first diagnosed with, with uh, coronary artery disease after the stent, of course, they put me on Plavix, oh. on statins, and uh, aspirin, a baby aspirin. And I, oh, I also had one, which I'm now allergic to, I can't take anymore. It's a beta blocker. Uh, it, it gets my heart rate so low that I can barely feel it. I used to sit, I sit at the side of the swimming pool about ready to get in and swim. And I checked my my uh, heart rate, and it was like thirty. I said, "I don't, I don't think this is good. <laughs> I really no. don't." No. So I, I I kind of weaned off of that with the doctor's help, and I don't take that anymore. The statins were so bad for me; they controlled my cholesterol. Uh, my cholesterol was very high when I had my my heart attacks. It was two eighty five or two ninety, and. Uh, when I took Provacol, uh, it came down to about 140. And I was able to take Provacol for a couple of years, three or four years, actually. And then the doctor that I was going to at that time says, we need to get those numbers lower. And I should have asked why, because I think they were fine. 
Right. But he said, I'm going to put you on Crestor, which will bring the levels down a little bit. I took Crestor for about three or four days. And when I got up in the morning, I could not stand on my heels. My wow. joints and muscles were so inflamed. It was just awful. And I went off of it for a couple of days and I called the doctor's office. She said, well, we'll take, we'll take blood tests and your, your liver, your liver levels are just fine. It's not the Crestor. I said, I have news for you. Dude, you got it. I kidding. went off. I went off a Crestor two days ago. Yesterday I was fine. This morning I was fine. But if I go on it tomorrow, I can almost guarantee that the next morning I will not be able to walk. Well, I can't see how that can be Crestor. I said it is. I'm going I'm going back to Provacol. And eventually my body said you can't have that anymore because even with a half dose of Provacol, I was waking up with the same kind of body aches that I had with statins in the past. And they're misrepresented completely. All it is is a, uh, uh, oh, I forget, I can't remember the name. It'll pop up in about 10 minutes. Um, but it, it, it really has nothing to do with cholesterol. It has to do with. No. No, no not at all. And they won't tell you that. Have anything to do with health. I mean, we now no. know, you know, it's, it's a meaningless number. What matters is your inflammatory markers. That's the only right. thing that matters. Exactly. And that could be affected by a lot of other things. But I, I finally got to the point where I told my doctor, I'm sorry, I'm not taking them anymore. I'll have to be satisfied with cholesterol at 200. It's genetic cholesterol. I'm not getting yes. it from my food because I don't eat any anything that's high in cholesterol at all. I'm very careful. So that that's that that was my story on statins. It's it's absolute absolutely poison to me. It's I poison to take it. There is uh, no yeah. there's and, and yet, no value in it. None. You know, now they're trying to put say, oh, you use a microdose to do this or that yeah. this condition. It's all bullshit. All of it. Well, they're trying they're trying to get kids on it now, which I think is criminal. Oh. Absolutely criminal. Of course. The demons in Big Pharma have to have you dependent physiologically, yes. psychologically, and financially. <laughs> Right, so they can increase the price to where you can't afford it. <laughs> That's it's what they all do. I mean, look, 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 dude. I'll say this to you. I've said this before. I mean, the entire model of sick care, big pharma, is to get an adult, male or female, to sixty-four to sixty-five, and then lit literally get them dependent on certain multicolored pills that yep. they now take until their body gives out, right? Because the liver and the kidneys give out ultimately, eventually from yep. the side effects of the multiple All drugs. All the medicines, yeah. 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 And the, 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 the other thing I found out from statins when I, when I went off of them, I had been concerned because my glucose levels had been going up. Yeah, uh, no instead shit. of being you know, like 95 to 100, they were around 120 sometimes. And I, the, the nurse who was at the, the gym that I went to, they used to check blood blood uh, or heart rate when you came in sure. while you were exercising and after. And that saved me from being on blood pressure med medication because I have white cone anxiety. Every time I go to the doctor's office, my blood pressure just skyrockets. <laughs> but I, I don't have high blood pressure. I never have that. The lab coat. And, uh, yeah, it really is. And she used to laugh at me. She said... 120 is not diabetes. Don't worry about it. You're right. not going to have any problems. Right. She said, I have clients that I work with who wake up in the morning at 400 and they're happy. So don't worry about 120. But I did notice when I stopped statins, my blood glucose levels went down to 85 to 95. Yeah, of course. Immediately. Of course. And the other, the other thing that was strange is that one, uh, uh, endocrinologist that I did get a hold of at OHSU who was into uh, HGH and he was very supportive of, of testosterone replacement and I don't I, I went through hell trying to find him but once I found him I had him for a couple of years until he decided to go somewhere else and do something else uh, he started me on metformin he said I think you're pre-diabetic and let's just take this for insurance so that it doesn't, you know, so that you don't slip into diabetes too, because we right. don't want that. 
Right. And I've taken I've taken that for probably 14, 15 years. I'm, so I I'm take it regularly. 15 years, Ted. It's 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 the most profound life altering medication on earth. And yeah. as you know, it's not a medication, even though Big Pharma did patent no. it a long time ago. It's a plant. It's yeah, it's a fountain of a fountain of youth is what to look at it. There's absolutely it, no doubt about yeah. it, Ted. I'm really glad you yeah. said that on the show. Um I want to just give you, you know, the last couple of minutes here, kind of like, you know, your recommendations for a, you know, older men to not be fearful of using therapeutic testosterone, you know, obviously whatever else you want to talk about. And then, you know, maybe just kind of a plea to, you know, anybody who finds themselves like you, it's okay. There's yeah, nothing. It wrong. is okay. And you're not alone. And I, that's the one thing that I own uh, that I got from the how group that I belong to. When I when I came out, I figured I was the only eighty year old man anywhere, or the only man who was married and gay. Uh, just knowing that you're not alone is very very affirming, right? Very affirming. And if you're having, you know, if you, I had I had low level uh, depression and total lack of energy before I started uh, testosterone. I had ED. I still have ED. It doesn't really help that much. Uh, and just as a side mark, the, <laughs> the Cialis, I happen to have a few of them left, and I tried a couple days of them. I remember now why I stopped taking them, because I get stomach uh, stomach problems from them that are just right. never going to end. So I'm, I'm off of that already. But I've, I've learned to, to live with what I have. To make it the best I can. Right. Right. That's where I am. Awesome, man. Um, if somebody who watches this podcast wants to connect with you, you know, reach out to you, what is the best way they can do that? Uh, the easiest way is just through email. And uh, I'm trying to think if it would be smarter to use. Nah, just my regular one. It's tbach dot tbach. At TB, Comcast. Oh, T-B-A-C-H. Mm -hmm. Dot T B A C H. That's a, a, a long frigging story, but I won't go into it. That's at Comcast. Dot net. Dot net. Yeah. I'll just put your email up on real quick so people can see that. That's it, right? T B A C H. Yep, yep that's it. T B A C H. I and I'm I'm that. willing to I'm willing to help anybody I can because I know how hard it is when you can't find help. I was so thrilled by by reading your book, and I read it from cover to cover in a very short time because I can only imagine. I would get a I would come to a sec section and say, "Oh my God, that's the same thing I discovered." Wow, let's see what happened. <laughs> Go on and on and on. It was amazing to get through that book. That's why I appreciate and to realize it. to realize that we came to the same conclusion at about the same time, which is weird. Well, it's not though, because there are no coincidences in the universe, only synchronicities. And I know yeah. this, that when I say this, that you are a child of the light, as am I. And all of us now at this time on planet Earth are coming together in various forms and fashions. And it is it is weird in how we are now doing so, but it was an honor you know, to speak with you when you first reached out to me. Which, as you know, I mean, I get a lot of emails, and I, I really don't even respond to much many of them anymore because I have two assistants that are reading through them. But the good folks like yourself get through. And as soon as I saw your email, I responded to you and I said, "Holy shit, Ted! I would love to <laughs> meet with you on a podcast because you represent, you know, a portion of society that is obviously underrepresented, and yes. clearly, clearly has a loud, booming shot out of a cannon." personality <laughs> that needs to be heard and so you know if i've done anything today it's to give you a voice to more people and obviously to allow other people to have the courage and the bravery and most most importantly the authenticity to yeah. you know to be who they are it's necessary to be authentic it's not the easiest thing in the world but it can't be done you just have to be honest with, with, about yourself and to yourself and uh it's quite amazing. I, I look back and I'm really not fond of who I used to be, but I'm quite happy with who I'm becoming. That's awesome, man. That's a, that's a, that's a way, that's a great quote to end the show. And we are literally yeah. right under 45 minutes. So it's perfect. Ted, you were 
I mean, inspirational, aspirational, profound in, in, you know, what you shared here today. And again, I just, I laud your courage. You know, I'm grateful as a human being that I was able to connect with you and, you know, in this way. And I, and I already know, like, I can already tell you, like, I can't imagine the number of people that are going to reach out to you, you know, after this podcast airs saying, Hey man, proud, proud of you and congratulations. And Oh, by the way, how can you help me? <laughs> Right. That's, That's what we all have to do. We have to we have to help each other because there aren't too many of us around. That's true. At least not in the open. But you know, hopefully no, no. you will you will connect with more of people like us, you know, through this podcast for sure. I hope so. Awesome. I really Ted, appreciate the chance to talk to you. Thank you, Jay. Of course, man. I, I, I send you tremendous love and light and uh, I'm grateful, like I said, that you were able to come on here and tell your story and uh you know, to another 30 to 50 years, Ted, why not? You know, you got yeah, everything else exactly. figured out. You're all met for yeah. you're using therapeutic testosterone. You're connected to me. I mean, what, it can't be much better than that, bro. It can't be. And I, I can actually tell you now, I've, I looked at this some, my wife wanted to see what you looked like. So I opened your site and man, you've got killer abs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, prob I, I probably, I probably, man. I received that. <laughs> I would not have done that a year ago, but I'm to the point now where if I see something like that, I say, "Yeah, killer abs, good looking guy." <laughs> Thank you, brother. I, I truly, have, I appreciate that, and I received that. And again, man, I'm very honored that you came here today and shared with uh, you know the Jay Campbell audience. And it, it's, I'm, 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 I'm grateful. That's all. I, that's all. Thank I you say. for having me. I appreciate it very much. Awesome. So for all of you guys out Bye. there that uh, watch the Jay Campbell podcast, you know, support the amazing people that come on. Uh, reach out to Ted if he inspired you in any way or if you have a story similar to him. Remember, his email address is tbach dot tbach at comcast.net. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize <laughs> your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.